إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشى ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله رب العالمين الله brought us back and we are back again it's always good to be back it's always good to be uh, learning and one of the things um, I just don't know why I chose th this topic but because always especially when you come out from a, um, a month or a season of worship is go back to the Quran you always go back to the Quran and always the question comes in is why and I say this to myself before anyone is why the Quran is not changing us as an ummah as uh, um, Muslims I mean we all read the Quran but the question is why I am the same as I am mm -hmm. and I've read the Quran Allah knows how many times and Allah knows how many times in a month especially when I am like let's say in Hajj or I am in, in, in Umrah or I'm in Ramadan so I was looking subhanAllah Allah brought this book to, to me subhanAllah was a gifted from one of my friends and I was look, reading it and I was like this is a good it's a very simple practical book about not how to read the Quran and tafsir is actually what is the steps for me to understand the Quran meaning not understand word to word because word to word all all the Quran has word to word and there's books word to word is how do I basically live the Quran how do I get to the point where in my life in my daily activity the ayat comes in the ayah comes in and this is actually is not something fictionous uh, like fiction this is real. I've seen people, I've seen people that in that moment, the ayah from the Quran comes to them. It's amazing, subhanAllah. Yeah, it's amazing. Whether it's an action they have to do and they are hesitant, then the ayah comes in and make them do it or the other way around. Or what to, to say, what the best way to do things. So basically, that, the, the concept is called tadabbur. It's not tafsir. There's a difference in the Arabic language. Tafsir is interpretation. Meaning, I'm reading this and what does this ayah mean and then usually when you read the books of tafsir you're going to read most of it it depends which one you're reading but then there is usually a hadith of rasul or they caught another ayah from the quran and then they mufassir the, the person who is doing the interpretation add his uh, or his knowledge to, to it that's called tafsir tadabbur is a different story tadabbur is basically is reflection is i will understand of course the meaning but reality of the matter, how this will change me and how this will move me and how this will get me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, and I'm going to quote the easiest ayah, which almost every Muslim know, which is, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Right? Say, Allah is one. The, the meaning is very easy, right? You don't know, reality. Whether you speak Arabic or you don't speak Arabic, you do not need to open a book to draw what the meaning of say. Qul, say Allah, Allah, ahad one. Right? So this is tafsir. So once you said, Qul wallahu ahad, say Allah is one, then, then you have know the meaning of the ayah. That's tafsir. Tadabbur is the deeper meaning of this. What does Allah want from me? when he revealed this ayah, me, not the sabab al nizul not why this ayah was revealed. What this, this ayah should teach me, change me, make me do, or make me not to do. So the, the, the dabbur is the inner meaning of an ayah, a verse, or an inner meaning of a sentence, if you want it in general, that will lead me to the goal of that sentence that will take me as I deep think, deep, that needs deep thinking, deep thinking, deep reflection. On it, it will take me to the goal, to the aim, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. So for example, and I'm gonna apply, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ means what? قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say Allah is one, means what? No means no God but Allah, right? that's I know this for fact and you know this for fact and we all know this for fact are we living it are we really reflecting on this right and then you're going to come and ask me what does reflecting Qul huwa Allahu ahad means very simple but it's not easily practiced Qul huwa Allahu ahad means 
There's no God but Allah, meaning no one will harm me but Allah. Or I would say out of adab with Allah, no one will hurt me without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can give me something. In reality, Allah is the one, the only one who gives Allah, the only one who takes is Allah, who will manner. And the only one who withhold is Allah, basically the names of Allah. Now this also maybe we know this meaning, but now bring it to my daily life. Bring it to my daily life and how much I am really, really practicing this. When I say, you know what, I'm so worried I'm going to lose my job. I'm so worried if I do, if I go part time, I'm so worried my income will be less. That tells me I'm not living Qulhu Allahu hmm. That tells me I am living, the job is giving me the money. Versus, Allah is going to give me the money. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give me the money, he will give me the money. So tadabbur of the Quran is actually reflecting on the meaning of the ayah. That's why tadabbur is not something you will do it quickly. You cannot reflect on the Quran in inner meaning of the Quran, inner depth meaning of the Quran, and you are just reading it like we read. So that's number one. Number two, what is the goal of reading the Quran? You usually you have to, to, to get to the to the deeper meaning of the reflection of the Quran. I need to know why I am reading the Quran. Saying because it's the word of Allah and I will get reward, that's only one. And that's the least. That's like you know, when you when you start walking, this is the first step. Most of us stop here. Most of us stops here, and that's why we're not changing. Because I say, Alhamdulillah, I read, I read, I finished my juz, I finished my hizb, I finished my para. And some people memorize the whole Quran, and they don't know what they are reading, but they know the words. So there is a reward, huge, but they it will not change them. I will not, I will not be what Allah wants me unless I know. And this is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said. If you ask someone, why did Allah send the Quran to us? The answer is in the Quran. What did Allah says in the Quran? Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun. Why? Liyadabbaru ayati wa liyatadakkaru ulu albab. Allah said this in Surah Sad. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayk. A book that we send it to you, and you is to Rasul Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? He didn't say to read and get the reward with barakah. You know, Quran, like, you know, you, you, you read it in, the, in your house and then there's going to be barakah. Or I, I have an exam tomorrow, so I'm going to read today, so Allah will make me pass the exam. No. So they will reflect and learn deeply the meaning of the ayah. And those who knows well, those who are wise, they will learn, they will remember in reality, they will comprehend what Allah wants. So the first thing I'm going to say in front of me when I open the Quran, and I'm saying this to myself before anybody else, when I open the Quran, it should not be only because Allah, this is the words, only because it's the word of Allah and I will get reward. That's taken, that's given, but that's not it. That's only the first thing. So number one, when I need, and this is going to be a series, yani, when this is just an introduction, we'll do this today. The first thing is I need to change the way I look at the Quran. We Muslims, change the way you look at the Quran. It's the word of Allah, there is no doubt about that. But it's the word of Allah that was given to me to know Allah, number one. Number one is to know Allah. And number two is to know how to live in this life the way the creator of this life wants me to do. And number three, no way to get closer to Allah other than his words. No way you will get to Allah other than his words. And it is a beautiful um, parable. And they say, the Quran is like the sea. How many of you do see sailing? Or you do snorkeling? Because that absolutely applies to it. It's like a sea. So when you go on a beach, remember this. The Quran is like a bee, like the sea, and you're standing at the beach. When you stand at the beach, what do you see? You see beauty. You see beautiful. 
You always say, subhanallah, right? Especially if it's a beautiful day. And you see the outside, the outside part of the sea. And you see the outside beauty. Talk to someone who does a snorkeling or who does diving. The person who does a snorkeling, he will say, oh, you haven't seen anything. Oh, wait, wait, till you come and see, right? Talk to somebody who does deep diving, talking to the person who does a snorkeling. He says, you haven't seen anything. You've only seen the superficial. Come with me deeper and see what you will see. This is the Quran. So the more I learn, the more I go deeper, the more I will find the beauty, enjoy the beauty, learn the beauty. So it's a zahir and it is a batan. So it's an inner and then it is an inside. And this is a very beautiful quote and I'm going to translate here. Sahil Tistri, who is a, um, a very pious man, he says, if the human being was given thousands meaning of one ayah in the Quran, he will not have no, the, the depth, he would not reach the depth of this ayah, even if he was given 1,000. And he said, because this is where it, where it comes beautiful. Because he says, this is the words of Allah. And we have always to remind ourselves, the Quran is the words of Allah, because this comes out, we don't remember this. This is not human being wrote it. This is the words of Allah. And he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this is his words, and he, his words is his characters. And as Allah, now this is, as Allah is endless, Allah is infinite. We all know this, subhanah. As Allah is infinite, his words are infinite. His words are not created. How can a created thing understand fully something that is not created? So what you, when you look at the Quran, you're really going to tell yourself, don't say, oh, oh, I understood. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Right? When you come to somebody, if you, if you, if you re, uh, get an email or get a text or get an announcement about a halaq about Surah uh, Al-Samad, which is Qul Allahu Ahad, the chapter of Qul Allahu Ahad, a lot of people say, okay, I know it. I know it. This is where the main thing is. Like every ayah in the Quran has layers. And, and one of the ways I, I, I look at the Quran is like you are walking into a corridor. Like remember these old homes or old castles. The corridor has high ceiling and you're walking. There's a lot of doors. And every time you, you open a door, there's another door in front of you. But between these two, there is a, a lot of beauty. You say, Allah subhanAllah, this is beautiful. Then you go inside to the other door and you open it and there's even more beauty and more beauty and more beauty. And the best way to get to this before I go to any of the details is actually ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show you the beauty of his book. Mm. And if you look at it, you're going to look at it in, in this way. There's a Quran and there is the human being and there is the message Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. The Quran is never changed, right? The Quran is the same. How many years? Thousands of years. Why this question has to come to everybody? Why it's the same ayah? Same ayah. Any ayah in the Quran. And remember this when you're praying. Anywhere. Let alone in Ramadan in Taraweeh. Same ayah. The, the imam is reciting. One person is sobbing. And you have seen some people when they really feel the ayah. The person next to him, it's the same ayah. It's the same reciter. And the person next to them is probably f working hard, struggling to focus. The person on the left is actually probably working with the hijab or, or working with a thobe. Mm -hmm. And there could be somebody else is probably their brain is, their thoughts is way far away. Isn't the same source? Is it the same ayah? It's the same reciter. Where is the problem? In the receiver. So there is a receiver. The Quran, when you read it, there's like a triangle. The Quran itself is never changed. It's the same. There is the receiver, and there is the means to receive it. The receiver is me. And which part of me is my heart? 
is like you see yourself when you are did a lot of good deeds and then you come to pray or you were fasting and then you just break your fast or you're still fasting or you went in Umrah or you did something good and then you come and you pray, your heart is clear, clearer. And then when you read, you feel it. Versus if you were so busy, imagine this, you know, like you were cooking or you were with the kids and you look and says, oh, there's only 10 minutes left for Salah and you run to pray. You don't even remember what you said because of the receiver. So the the main thing in tadabbur, in the reflection of the Quran, is I need to look at the receiver. I'm going to talk a lot about it later on. But my heart, if I don't feel it, it is not because, well, billah, it is too hard. And I, I'm going to come to this in a second. It's not because it's too hard. It's because it is, my heart is stained. Mm. The mean, not to clean the heart, but the mean to come from the Quran to my heart is the reflection. Is the means I use to make me learn the Quran better. One principle, you always have to say, two principles actually, even before you open the Quran. Who's my enemy? And who's your enemy? Who's my enemy and your enemy? Before that, al-shaytan. What did Allah say? Inna al-shaytan lakum adu. Shaytan is your enemy. It's clear ayah. Allah said this in Surah Fatah. He calls his, his party, his friends, his people to be of the people of the hellfire. Right? And Allah says also in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah is going to come. In Taha, it also says Allah, the shaitan is the enemy. So I need to know there's an enemy standing there. Imagine this when you are opening a door and you know there's somebody behind the door. Right? What are you going to do? You're opening the door and there is somebody behind the door. What are you going to do? You're going to get ready. How are you going to, let's assume it's a child. It's not, don't get scared, it's a child. And you don't want to hurt the child. What are you going to do? You're going to take precautions. So when you open the door, don't hurt the child. Shaitan, the moment I'm going to pick up the, the Quran, right? He's my enemy. And he is not going to like it when I am reading the Quran. So when I open the Quran, I have to be careful how I am going to open the Quran with pushing the shaitan away. So I need to remember shaitan is there. And what is the easiest way to push shaitan away? And Allah also said it in the Quran. وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانُ الرَّجِيمِ And Allah said it clearly. See, this ayah is very clear. When you read the Quran, seek refuge from Allah. Seek refuge. Seek Allah refuge from shaitan. فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ سُلْطَانَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَتَوَلَّوْنَ He does not have, he does not have any control over those who does not want to be part of. So that's number one. When I open the Quran, I need to remember that shaitan is going to come. Now, you remember something in reality. The usual things when you read the Quran, how much you can focus? 10, 15 minutes, and then you are looking, where is my phone? What's happening? Let me go and do this and come back and this. Mm -hmm. So the shaitan is right here. So remember all this. Every time you want to move, you want to do something, and you read the Quran, remember, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Second thing where my nafs is going to come is you're going to say this, it's too hard. The language, especially for the non-Arab, and even for the, Arab, for the Arabs. It's too hard. I don't know what Allah is saying. The word is too hard. It's too complicated. I cannot understand this. So especially for everybody. Because that's one of the means shaitan will use against me and you. How do I respond to this? Also from the Quran. So always remember this, this simple ayat. Remember this. You may have to write it down. Put it next to the Quran. When you open the Quran. Allah said this in Surah Al-Qamar. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ we have made the Quran easy, easy to remember, to be a form of remembrance, actually. Anybody remember this? 
And Allah repeated this ayah repeatedly. Like when you read Al-Rahman, how many times Allah says, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَا This ayah in Surah Al-Qamar is this way. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ We made the Qur'an easy. And even scholars will teach you that out of the etiquette and politeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should never say Qur'an is hard. Because Allah said it is easy. So number two, so all these principles before I even open the Quran, that I will say there is someone sitting right there standing against me the moment I want to open the Quran. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it is easy. That means it is easy. And then immediately I will say, Ya Allah, make it easy. Remember this? So here you are. Now, this is also a very interesting point. The Quran, the interpretation of the Quran, this is scholars will tell you, is actually the Quran is four parts in the meanings. Meaning, there is part of the Quran which is very easy to understand. Very easy to understand. And we just shared, Qul huwa Allahu There is part of the Quran that almost everybody can learn. Almost everyone can learn. And there is part of the Quran that the scholars will know. And there is part of the Quran only Allah knows. Let's go back again. So the Quran will be four. It's not. The Quran is actually divided to four parts, meaning four parts regard, related to the meaning of the Quran. There is part which everyone can understand. And I just shared with you, Qulu Allah Wahad. Everyone know the meaning. And there is part of the Quran that everyone can learn the meaning. There is part of the Quran that only scholars. And there is part of the Quran only Allah knows the meaning of it. Only Allah knows the meaning of it. Then you come and say, what do you think the percentage of this part versus, versus this part? Meaning, what do you think the percentage of the easy part of the Quran and the part that everyone can learn versus the part that is only scholars and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do you think the percentage? The biggest percentage, most more than 80% of the Quran falls in this category. The category of everyone can understand or everyone can learn the meaning of. And I will tell you some examples that you can even go and try today, right? For example, Alhamdulillah, الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا. If you know Arabi, right? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, أنزل أنزل. I'll translate. But the, for the, anybody who's Arabi, أنزل. This is word we use it daily. على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا. Anyone who knows basic simple Arabi language will know this. Let's translate to English. Alhamdulillah. Praise to Allah. I'm not, I'm not doing interpretation. I'm just translating. Alhamdulillah, praise to Allah. Anzala, send down. Ala abdihi, to his servant. Al-kitab, the book. Walam yaj'al lahu iwaja. And he did not make faults in that book. Is that easy? That falls here. Right? If I want to go to the next one, I want to understand it a little bit deeper. What does this mean? The Quran is a ni'mah because Allah said alhamdulillah. That means it's a ni'mah, it's a grace, right? And that means the Quran has no faults because Allah said so. Does that need, uh, I need to go to college to understand that? So 80% of the Quran falls in this category. 80%. For example, I was just, just listening to Taha as I was driving uh, to you. The story of Sayyidina Musa in the Quran, it's so clear, so clear. Right? If you ask anyone who knows a little bit about the Quran, says, oh, there's a magicians, and then Sayyidina Musa, and then there was a stick, and there was snakes, and then they suddenly believed, and then Firaun got very upset, right? This is about three pages of what I just shared with you. So I need to go back to the Quran, and I say there's 80% meaning, and I'm not trying to scare anyone. I need to scare myself, number one. That means 80% of it. I'm going to be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's going to tell me, why didn't you know it? Why didn't you know it? The language is very easy or very easy to be learned. 
He's not going to ask me about the, the ones that scholars or let alone the one he subhanahu only knows. So I need to bring this back to me and I would, should not say, oh, it's too hard to learn. It's too hard. To, I'm, I'm not saying memorize. I'm saying to learn. So that's num number one. When I reflect on the Quran, when I reflect on the Quran, I, the, the goal, I will end up with the following. What is the main goal of the Quran? If someone asks you, what is the main goal of the Quran? What are you going to ask? Guidance. Guidance. Tawheed, exactly. The Quran came in to teach me who's Allah. So the my goal is after I read the Quran. So let's put it this way. And let's talk simple today. It's it's unacceptable. I should tell myself it's unacceptable, quote unquote, shameful, that after I read the whole Quran, it took me a month. It took me three days. It took me six months, and I still don't know Allah well. Because what is Tawheed? Tawheed is that you know Allah is the only God. Knowing this reading versus knowing. So when I keep re reading and reading, ما خلقنا السماوات والأرض ما خلقنا السماء والأرض We did not create the heavens and the earth. We did not create the heaven and the earth. And one part put us and one part didn't put us. The more I read about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I just read, moved from knowing the meaning to the second, then I'm going to know Tawheed. Tawheed meaning Allah is the only God. As قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ So that's number one. Number two, if I know Allah is only one, as I more and more and more, I read the Quran, and more and more I found out that is all I need to do everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our main problem in this life. Wallah if we learn, may Allah teach us all Amen. to do things only for Allah. And I said only, no other reason, neither to even my parents. If I am good to my parents because that pleases Allah, not because they are my parents or because they are nice or they took care of me when I'm young. Only for Allah. I do it only for Allah, everything. When I am nice to my husband, only for Allah. I take care of my children only for Allah. I am studying for Allah. I'm good in my work for Allah. To me, this is the recipe of happiness in this life because you will not be disappointed. And you're not going to be sad. And you're not going to be expecting anyone. Quran, one of the goals. As I read it, it's going to teach me who's Allah and it's going to make me gradually do things only for Allah. The more I know Allah, the more I submit to him, the more I love him. Is that what happens when I say قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ When I come to the last surah of the Quran or I just said الحمد لله I finished khatma. So I need to remind myself and it happens it, it will happen بإذن الله because he sent it for this reason. Now there is keys to understand the Quran and I'm going to give you the headlines today and then as we go we will go. The first key to understand the Quran, what do you think? This was very interesting when I was reading this book. It's actually loving the Quran. Love, the relationship of love, which we don't have this. Like, what do you love in life? If I ask you here, what are you going to answer me? What do you love? You can't tell me my children. Absolutely. Let's, let's ask the young lady who doesn't have children yet. He doesn't have children yet, inshallah, Allah will give her soon. What do you love? Now you're going to tell me I love my husband because you just got married. Oh, right? Parents. <laughs> Our parents, right? <laughs> right? What about, what about you, Sarah? Usually, young generation will be material, right? I love my phone. I love my room. I love my bed. There's nothing haram in this, right? I need to gradually, and, and as, as this famous line that I was taught a long time ago, is fake it till you make it. Fake it. Tell I love the Quran. Number one is to key, to understand it's the relationship of love. And I always bring this example. When women cook and cook, when she cooks because she has to feed her children versus she cook because she loved to cook, what is the result? Huge difference. Even if it's the same recipe, right? Absolutely. Anything you do with love, 
anything you do with love, the result is different because you love it. You put your emotions, you put, as we say, you put your heart in it. So I need number one to the keys. And I'm just going to, again, give you the keys. Number one is I need to start knowing that there, my relationship with the Quran way more than it's the words of Allah and I'm going to get the reward. It is a, a, a relationship of love. It's amazing we do have a love relationship with other than human beings, right? I love my bed. I love my phone. I love my jewelry, ooh, 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 right? I love my, I don't know what else we love, material. I'm not talking about human, right? So it's, the concept of loving non-human is not unheard of or is not something not, we, we don't know what it means. It's actually our day life. I love my car. I love my garden, right? I love my rug. If I can do this, so why I don't do this with the words of Allah? Habibni, even one of the du'as, Ya Allah, make me love your words. Habibni bil Quran, make me love it. That's number one. Number two, why I am reading every time, every time when you're reading the Quran, even if it's a half a page, two lines, remember what? It's to know Allah well, and then I'm going to do all my actions to Allah only, then I am going to be loving Allah and I'm going to obey Him. So the, this. And to give you even more, yani more systematic. Number one, I read to learn. I, I need, I am learning, I am reading to learn. Right? For example, give me something Quran taught you, not your mother, not life, not experience. Quran taught you something. What does the Quran taught you? Tawakkul in Allah, because that was the main thing for the Tisna Convention. Okay, but did the Quran taught you? Did the Quran taught you? Yes. I'm talking about the Quran itself. Something you read in the Quran and you said, I learned it. See, 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 look at you. Okay, beautiful. So Quran taught me there's something called Jannah, paradise. And the Quran taught me the beauty of it and made me long for it. So ilm, so number one, I am reading the Quran to learn. If I did not read the Quran, I didn't know there is hellfire. Yeah. If I take it simple, don't go do too deep. It's very simple in the beginning. Remember, we are, we're still on the shore. We didn't even go snorkeling yet. We're still on the shore. So I, I read the Quran. I learned there is prophets. I read the Quran. There is, and I learned there is other people lived before us. I learned the Quran, and I learned there's something called water, and there's something called sea, and there's earth, and there's mountains. Don't you hear? See this Star, stars. So number one is to learn. Number two is to act by what we learn. So I learn, so I, the moment I learn something, I put it to practice. You put the wakul, you put it the last one. But t take something simple that you learn from the Quran and then you start practicing, right? For example, honey, right? Honey, simple, we all love honey, why? Most people will answer this. Why do we love honey? Exactly. Everybody will answer this because it's mentioned in the Quran. And it is shifa and it is a medicine, a cure. Everybody knows this. I'm, I'm giving you very simple things. As we go, inshallah, Allah will show us even deeper. But so I learned, I put it to practice. Then the question comes in, do you use honey daily? because Allah said so. Then yes, you, you put the knowledge to practice. Khalas. And even like, you know, when, when some, anybody comes and says, oh, no, honey is harmful. I was like, I'm sorry. No, don't even talk about it. Fihi shifa only nas. Allah said it's category, clear, clear word, shifa, cure. Fihi in it, cure to people, clear word. So number one, I learned. Number two, I practice. Number three, which is very nice. I read the Quran to talk to Allah. 
to have this personal dialogue with Allah. Think of this. Now these days we lost these. Remember the days when we used to have used to have mail. Remember, I mean now these days I'm sure very very soon there will be no mailbox anymore, right? In the homes. But remember, like and then your mother is in India and Pakistan. Your mother, yeah. your your sister is wherever, right? And you're waiting for that, for that for that letter. And then the letter comes in and you open the letter and then you keep reading and you keep reading, you keep reading. You read it, but you still keep reading. These days, there's no letter. These days is what? There's messages. And it's never been erased. There's messages who stays there in the phone. And I keep reading and reading. Why? Because you love not what they are saying. Could be, but mainly because you love the person who sent it. True or false? I was like, oh, this is from my best friend. I haven't seen her for years. I mean, think of the people you love. My goal, reading the Quran should be Munajatullah, I'm reading his words that he sent it to me. And it's a, on a personal level. Munaja is like the um, private personal talk with Allah with love. So that's number three. Number four is to, for the reward. Now when we say, why do you read the Quran? Because I want to the reward. It should not be number one. It's always there, alhamdulillah. But four is, and number five, why do you read the Quran? Which this is underused as a, as a form of cure, medicine. Quran itself, shifa, shifa. So I need to put this in front of me. You know what I'm saying? We are, we are living in a day and time where I need to know why I'm doing this. It has to be very clear and I have to uh, schedule everything, and I have to plan everything. This is how we are living these days, right? We all have lists. We do it from this time to this time. Do the same thing for the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remove this layer and take you to the deeper one. And you start treating it because you, you want to know more and because you're enjoying it. Like when you are diving and people says, done, we, it, time. It's like, no, 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 let me see one more. That's what I want. When I am having the Quran, I don't want to stop reading. SubhanAllah, it's something in this morning brought to my... Yani I was thinking, Sayyidina Uthman, you all know this, when he read the whole Quran in one ruqa. This is a very famous, well-known. It's he, he was seen in Hijr Ismail. The whole night, the whole Quran in one ruqa. In one. The only time they saw him doing... Prostration is sujood tilawa When the ayah comes in that we are, um, yani as a sunnah, that we, we will go for prostration. That tells me, when I think of this, when I when I reflect on this, this is a man, radiyallahu anhu, who is enjoying reading. Enjoying reading. And compare you and me, when we are in tarawih, and the imam did two, two pages, and he's going to the third, and half, if not, almost everybody is like, when is he going to say Allahu Akbar? So Munajatullah. So the reason when I put in my in, again when I open the Quran, even write that down. I am reading it number one to learn. To learn about everything. Actually, one of the things Quran teaches you is yourself, me. Because if you expose yourself and you bring yourself to the Quran, especially when it comes to the ayat of characters, the ayat of dealings with each other, or the ayat of giving. And then you, you bring yourself and say, is this is me? Is this is me? Especially if Allah is praising that character. Is this me? So ilm teaches me about Allah, teaches me about this dunya, teaching me about the hereafter, and teaching me about me. It really teaches you about the other people. Other people meaning I'm learning, I'm reading to, read, to know what's my friend look like or the other. No, it's about you. Number two is to practice everything you learn like for example one of you tell me the last ayah you've read that comes to your mind whether today yesterday last week it's something you read very and and it's sticking stayed in your mind and give me the meaning it doesn't have to give me the eye okay push away harm with the best way Look at how Allah said this. Push the harm in the best way you can. Meaning, someone is harming me, already harmed me. 
Let's assume someone harms you. And what is the usual way of harming us, we women? Backbiting. Somebody talked about you. Or somebody did an action and you're hurt. The Quran tells me, Push this harm or respond to this harm, not with retaliation, in the best way you can. And this depends who you, I, who you and I are. I mean, no way in the Quran will say, push it in the same way, right? Allah said it, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا And another part of the Quran says, the, the, reward, the reward or the punishment of a harm is the same way. But the, the, the order came to Rasulullah push harm in the best way. So when someone says something not good about you, how do I respond? If I learn this ayah, learned, I'm going to practice it. Maybe in the beginning, I'm not there yet. In the beginning, I'm just going to struggle not to say a word. Let's assume it was verbal. And I'm going to say, you know what? I'm just going to control my tongue. I'm not going to answer. And answer means not only talking, message, email, whatever. And then as I go more and more, I'm going to learn to nothing stays in my heart. As I go more and more and more, and then as I read more and more and learn more and more and more, I am going to even do more. So ilm, Quran, I am reading it to learn. I am not reading it only because it's the word of Allah. Learn, practice. Give me another ayah because that's what's going to make you think of it. Any other ayah you read? In English. Allah. Allah. Isn't Allah enough for his servant? And the answer should be, Bala ya Rabbi kafi. Yes, oh my Lord, you're enough, more than enough. And Allah is saying this, Surah so Zuma, Allah is saying this in a, in a question form. Alaysa Allahu bi kafin abda? Isn't Allah enough for you? We all know the ayah. I think most of you know the meaning, if not maybe exactly the wording. Then I learned this. Then I should say, yes, Allah is enough for me. Meaning, Enough, I am a Muslim and Allah gave it to me. Enough. Absolutely. Ilm. And then Amal. Then Amal comes in. When I say, Alaysa Allahu bi kafin abda, I am not worried about my future. I am not worried about my sustenance because Allah kafi. Allah will take care of me. Now comes your tawakkul. Here comes the tawakkul. Did you get the point? So you read number one and you read the ayah and keep repeating the ayah. And we're going to come to this, inshallah, later on, is that one of the keys for the, you keep repeating the ayah. That's why you hear these stories about the Sahaba, the righteous people, stays repeating the ayah and again and again. Why? Because the ayah starts hitting you and hitting you and hitting you. And then you're going to start remembering things came in your life. And you did not practice, and you did not really practice Allah is enough for me. And then Allah will show you, no, maybe sometimes you did, as you repeat. So ilm, learn, practice. I read the Quran to learn, to practice for the reward and for the private in uh, uh, special moments between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last thing is for the cure. Rarely we use it for cure. Rarely we use Quran for cure, unfortunately. We don't. We use it, we read it for the dead, but we don't read it for the for the living people, which is amazing. I mean, everybody read it for the dead, alhamdulillah, but for the living, and it is cure. So to, and we'll summarize this before the Maghrib, is love the Quran, remember the goals of the Quran. The best way to, if, to learn deeper meaning is to read and you have memorized it. So for example, you, you memorize, which everybody I'm sure, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ Right? قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Read قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ And you want to understand the meaning and you are not reading the Quran out of memory. Because sometimes, especially when you stop in it, it's going to make you focus on the ayah itself. The best way to understand the Quran, number one, is to read it in the night in the night salah, in the night salah, whether you read, if you're not a half of read it, read it even if it's a page. And keep repeating this in a whole week. 
repeated again. So now you learned Alayhi Sallallahu Bikafin Abda. You should go home today and start reading Alayhi Sallallahu Bikafin Abda the whole week. And think of, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala of course will test you and me. He made you say this because there's going to be a test very soon. And most of us, the test comes and, and goes and we don't even know there was a test. But Allah will test, will test me and you. Alayhi Sallallahu Bikafin Abda. Isn't Allah is enough for you? So keep repeating it, keep repeating it, keep repeating it till you will get to the meaning of it. So the the tadabbur, the reflection, the meaning of the Quran is this is what I, I'm going to say again and again. Is it? It's not impossible. It is something possible. It is something doable. I need to remove the first obstacle that says the Quran is hard. Because what do you tell your child? When he says math is very difficult, right? What do you say to them? You all, what do you tell them? Huh? Right? Said so practice. Other people can do it, then you can do it, right? You all, all say this. Subhanallah. Everybody say this, right? You don't like it, you don't have to like everything you do, right? Subhanallah. When it comes to the Quran, that obstacle is right there, and I say, I can't. I can't. I don't know what I am reading. I don't put the effort. If I ask every one of us, myself included, how much effort I and you put to learn things about dunya, about life, driving. Did I was born learn, know how to drive? Didn't you go to school or you had someone to teach you, right? And it was difficult in the beginning, so scared to go into that highway. Remember, I still remember the first time I had to go through the exit. I was like, Ya Allah, make it easy, right? Now it's a piece of cake. Same thing. Everything in the beginning is difficult, but then it will get easier. Any take home today message is number one, learn the concept of loving the Quran. Love it. And the relationship should change from just it's the word of Allah and I'm gonna get the reward to a relationship of love. And how do you love someone? By knowing it. By knowing it. How do you love someone? You don't know anybody. I'm not talking about deep, deep love. I'm just gonna know that someone, right? If you know that's that's something or that person is good for you, mm -hmm. right? Or that did something good for you. I'm sorry. So the love relationship is something does good to me. I know for a fact, and I just shared it with you, and you all agreed. I know for a fact the Quran is good for me. I I, I mean I don't I doubt anyone dispute this fact that the Quran is good for me. I just need to say it's good for me and move my relationship. Even ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, make me love your words. Make me love your words. Make me have a daily relationship with my words. I say this to myself before anyone. If every Muslim look at the phone, may Allah forgive me for this, but just to make it, look at the Quran, the same amount of time he looks or she looks at the phone. How often we will read the Quran in a day? The average person look at their phones in a day. How many times? Oh, 150 no, 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 times. 150 times. No. Yeah, there was a study about that. 150 times. Every time, you know? Everybody has like obsession. There's no message because your phone is not on vibration. Your phone is on the ring. And then you keep checking. Well, there's nothing, but you keep checking. SubhanAllah. So, so move it to a relationship of, of love, number, number one. Number two is I'm reading it to learn. And number three, I am learning, I am reading it to practice. I'm reading it to have this relationship personal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I am doing it also for um, uh, a cure. Remember that our shaitan is going to be standing there preventing you. And always, a'udhu billah shaitan rajim, especially when you get distracted. When reading the Quran, you get distracted. Always go back and say, "A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim." It's extremely helpful. And I know how doable this in here is to have a group in this. To so you and one person. You know, there's a lot of groups these days. I don't doubt if anybody doesn't have at least two or three groups on WhatsApp, right? If there was a group, two or three people, not too big, too big, two or three people, and then you say, you know, every day I'm gonna read an ayah, you read an ayah, and I read an ayah, like three people. And I'm going to share the meaning, you share the meaning, you share the meaning. And you're consistent. Keep doing this, keep doing this. In a year, how much you have learned.
because one day you will put the other day that she puts the other day she puts so ta'awun they call it ta'ahadu the quran meaning have like a group uh, group get together for it There's something here i want to read it for you oh yeah exactly it's two sayings i alhamdulillah Allah made me remember this is tabut al-banani also like a saint or a very righteous people he said i struggled with the quran he knows arabi and he's a very righteous person and he said i struggled with the quran 20 years i struggled with the quran i wrestled actually if you want to use even better word i wrestled with the quran for 20 years meaning one time i win one time the quran win meaning me meaning my nafs wrestled the quran for 20 years then then i enjoyed it for 20 years so I struggled for 20 years and I wrestled with the Quran between my nafs and the Quran for 20 years. And then I um, uh, started to um, enjoy it. Um, there's a hadith of Rasulullah Wasallam. Probably this is the first time I read this hadith. And he says, Rasulullah Wasallam said, he asked his Sahaba, don't you witness, don't you bear witness that Allah is the only God? And they said, yes. And he said, don't you bear witness when Rasulullah, Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Shadu an la ilaha illallah. Shadow <laughs> لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم بارك على محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم So الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام said the following and this hadith is in Tabarani and he said don't you bear witness that I don't you bear witness that Allah is the God and no God other than him, they said yes. And he said, don't you bear witness that I am Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam? They said, yes, we do. And he says, don't you bear witness that this Quran came from Allah? They said, yes, we do. And this is the, what he said. Qala, fa'abshiru, have glad tidings, good news, be happy. This Quran has two ends. One end is in the hand of Allah. And the other end is in your hands. SubhanAllah. This Quran has two ends. One end, tarafuhu biyadillah. One end is in Allah's hand. And the other one, wa tarafuhu biyadikum. And the other end is in your hand. Fatamassaku bi. Hold tight to it. And once you do that, you will never perish. And you will never be losers. And you will never lose. Holds to it. Holds to it. And holding to it is, number one is, is to know what is there. Number two is to read it. Number three is to know what I am reading. Number four is to practice it. 
And all this comes in by knowing is the words of Allah, I need to love it. And as we go, inshallah, in this series, we're going to know what is the keys, how do I get to all this? And then inshallah, if Allah wills, we will start going through the surahs, just the main meaning of the surahs as we did, I think, 10, 12 years ago, bringing this back again to us, because this is something we always have to uh, learn again and again. Jazakumullah khairan, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiru wa atubu ilayh, sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi taslima kathira.